announcing today Criticisms continue internationally against last week's announcement by U.S. President Donald Trump that he would pull America out of a nuclear agreement with Iran. But apart from Israel, Iran's sworn enemy that welcomed Trump's move, many may have become surprised to see how certain countries in the Persian Gulf were also celebrating. Saudi Arabia, Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates publicly supported Trump's decision to quit the nuclear agreement with Iran, an agreement that the U.S. had signed with Iran in 2015 together with five permanent members of the Security Council as well as Germany. Saudi Arabia even went beyond this and said it would increase its oil production to make up for a market shortage in case Iran's supplies are cut due to returning sanctions. And this is already raising speculations that certain Arab countries are colluding with the Americans through a carefully calculated plan to harm the Islamic Republic. Well, the fact of the matter is not just Trump. Just take a look at American foreign policy since 1945 uh, in the region, particularly in the Persian Gulf region. And a very good example of that is Saudi Arabia. This relationship has been thus far in the past seven decades a transactional relationship and let me elaborate what this transactional relationship looks like that means saudi financially supporting various industries in the united states including the defense industry and in uh, as a reciprocation the united states is providing a perception of security for saudi arabia uh, but the nature of this transactional relationship has not changed whatsoever we might see it in different shape or form but it has been like this since uh, the end of the second world war 1945 onward Leader of Iran's Islamic Revolution Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Khamenei recently revealed that U.S. President Donald Trump sent a letter to certain Arab leaders in the Persian Gulf. Ayatollah Khamenei said Trump had called on Arab leaders to do more toward regional conflicts. While many in Washington and in the Persian Gulf are wondering how Iran's leader got access to the letter, the point that he raised deserves a close attention. Ayatollah Khamenei has quoted Trump as complaining that trillions of dollars that America is spending to the same effect is going to waste. Iran's leader criticizes the targets of U.S. President's pressures and warns that the U.S. wants to use them as, quote, humiliated slaves. Question, what does Trump want the Arab countries to do exactly? This issue of potential presidential correspondent to Arab leaders in terms of this transactional relationship, if true, is very significant. And probably majority of Arab leaders, regardless whether they are on, either in Abu Dhabi, Kuwait City, Riyadh, or elsewhere in the Persian Gulf, they would very much like to hide this from their populations and their societies because this is a token of humiliation. It is highly likely that uh, various leaders in the Arab world will do their best to hide this from their, uh, from, uh, from, uh, from their uh, society, mainly because this is going to jeopardize even their position and their leverage in the long term and their legitimacy. As criticisms against Trump over his Iran deal move are growing, many believe that those who are supporting him would sooner or later find themselves targets of widespread anger. For a country like Saudi Arabia that has soured its relations with the Islamic Republic over the past few years, it may be a good time to celebrate Trump's move. But such a celebration may be meaningless if the royals in Riyadh realize that they have engaged themselves in a fabricated crisis with Iran, a crisis that will only benefit their common enemy, Israel. It may still be too soon to realize the future course of U.S. pressures against Iran. The world is already rejecting Trump's Iran deal move as a mistake. To the same effect, those that cheered after he announced leaving the deal will share the same amount of criticism. Most importantly, because they blindly made themselves victims of a fabricated anti-Iran sentiment without looking at the facts on the ground.